Did you cover the Alabama Supreme Court thing? Uh, no, but it's IVF tubes, isn't it? The amazing, the, they actually bit the debate bro bullet because normally the debate bro bullet is if you're in a burning building and there are, you can only save one two-year-old baby or a hundred IVF tubes, which one would you save? And obviously people feel very uncomfortable saying they would save the tubes over the baby as it's getting fucking burnt to death and going, Mah! like, yeah. And there's a little fucking baby fat melts off of its cheeks. Ugh. Uh, but it seems like uh, Alabama would actually save the tubes. Alabama are fucking tube pilled. Look at this. Alabama University pauses IVF care after frozen embryos are deemed children. Medical school in Alabama has paused in vitro fertilization procedures in the wake of the first of its kind decision made by the state Supreme Court on Friday, which ruled that frozen embryos are children. <laughs> I... Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. They actually bit the tube bullet. Alabama would save 100 IVF tubes over, a, over one <laughs> two year old baby. Oh no. IVF treatment paused. In the decision released on Friday, two wrongful death suits were allowed to proceed against a mobile fertility clinic, in effect ruling that fertilized eggs and embryos are children. I mean, that has to, it has to be. If your life begins at conception, then this has to be part of it. Or personhood begins at conception, I guess, because life, you can technically, whatever. I don't even know how I can... Life does begin at conception. I mean, you can say that if you want. The question is more about personhood, though. You can make the argument that life begins at conception, but that's not the that's not the question people are asking, right? It's not just life is not the single quality that we decide whether or not something like has rights. Okay, lots of things have life, but they don't have like rights. So, or at least not human rights. So, yeah, personhood is the big question, and then. That's when people get into all the arguments over whether personhood begins at consciousness. Or, yeah, when do rights begin rather than life? As I say, yeah. For those living with infertility and trying to build a family, a normal IDF cycle is hard enough. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of people who are right now in the middle of a physically and emotionally challenging medical process to fulfill their dream of a baby. Would-be parents have invested their hearts, time, and financial resources. Uh, now, less than a week after the Alabama Supreme Court's devastating ruling, Alabamans in the midst of seeking treatment have had their lives, their hopes, and their dreams crushed. This cruel ruling and the subsequent decision by UAB's health system are horrifying signals of what's to come across the country. We will continue to fight to maintain and increase access to care for the one in six adults nationwide who struggle with infertility. I did not know it was one in six. Spoken like a true debate abortionist. Hey, hey. A debate fanny doctor. I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> Any chance this ruling goes to the Supreme Court? Well, I don't... Would it? Because I thought it was... I thought the whole point of getting rid of Roe v. Wade was that it was sent back to the states, no? I thought this is up to the states. The states will decide. Get f When do you think personhood begins? Um... I don't think about it that much because I'm British and we don't have to care about abortion. We have a very progressive dogma about it here. <laughs> like, but um, I'm probably sold on the consciousness argument. I'm sold on the 20, 24 weeks. So it was, I guess, would mean 20 weeks. Because that seems to be how we value whether a human being is truly like alive to us like, in a way. Because people might say things like heartbeat. Well, if your heartbeat stops, you can be resuscitated, right? Like, there's a chance of it anyway. Um, or when people say mitosis, because like, I think the beginning of life is like when it begins like the mitosis process, uh, when the single cell becomes like, starts uh, dividing. Yeah, uh, people might say that, but then uh, I don't know, like, really, if it if it were the case that like human beings, uh, after they died, uh, mitosis continued for any longer than that period, because I think I know um, gene expression does ch still continue after you die sometimes for up to 48 hours, or maybe even a bit more, that some genes actually become more active when you die. I think for mitosis, I think mitosis can still occur for even like, um, is it a few, it's either a few minutes or a few hours after you die, but no one's sitting there waiting for the fucking mitosis to stop to pronounce you dead, right? Um, so, and if you think about all these things we subjectively value, 
a good question to ask to anyone is let's say there are like two human beings and they are both every organ in their body is dead apart from one for one person the heart is kept alive by machines so everything else is done their brain is off their fucking everything's done apart from their heart which is being kept alive by a machine uh the other person is kept alive only by the brain so they're still thinking they're still like uh they've still got brain activity they're still conscious they can but everything else in the body is dead right so these are the two hypothetical people and just think about that with every single quality so you've got a third person everything's dead but there's a machine that's continuing the mitosis process say there, there's another body that there's a everything is dead but the machine is like still pushing like gene expression to continue around the body uh kidneys liver like all you can do is all these organs and all these parts of a human i feel like the one who is most alive to us is most still there would be the one whose brain is still alive right i just feel like that's quite that feels quite uncontroversial to say and i think once the brain is done like that's when you know there's no coming back, right? There's like, once your fucking brain dies and it's not rep it's not reparable. That's when someone's dead. Even when the heart stops, people can still like try and bring the heart back until uh, and hope that you get a heartbeat again. But that's what I think. So if life ends there, if life ends when you are no longer able to experience consciousness, like when your brain is just like done, then why doesn't life begin there? Why doesn't personhood begin there? Why does it begin somewhere at a different place? Because people, when they say, I think the most common thing I hear for life begins at conception is uh, gene expression. But again, that's not where we end life. So you think it would make more, but again, it's still arbitrary. It doesn't have to be the case that life begins and ends in the same place. But I don't know. That's how I see it anyway. And it seems to be from research that your brain develops its capacity for consciousness tends to start at around 20 to 24 weeks. Um, when did people, uh, humans develop consciousness? Uh, where is it? It's the activation of the cortex by <laughs> thalamocortical connections. 24 weeks? Is this? Yeah. And I, if you were going to make a, like a law for it, you would just have the hard line being at whatever the minimum is. I think there are some studies that suggest 20. So make it 20. Fuck. Um, I agree with the thought experiment, but then there's the question of whether consciousness is too strong a standard because many animals are conscious as well. Well, we have, well, human consciousness. Yeah, unfortunately, we do treat animals differently because of uh, consciousness, but their consciousness is different from human consciousness. It's like a different kind of consciousness. Um, you can argue whether or not the animal consciousness makes them worthy of protection. I would personally say, like, not really, because um, my most convincing like moral philosophy that I've like looked into is the idea that we basically act out of self-interest. And that's why we, when we have moral rules for the rest of society, um, what's best for most humans is most likely going to be best for us. Like that's what, so it's like that whole best of all possible worlds, uh, or like the best compromise for human beings. So that's kind of where I stand. I don't know. Um, I could maybe be sold on the bodily autonomy thing because of like, there's like a self-defense argument in there, but I feel like bodily autonomy arguments get a little bit dicey sometimes. Um, but it just, it's just kind of convenient as well. I wonder if I would lean to the consciousness argument or if I'd still be convinced by it. If it turned out that consciousness actually began at six weeks, would I really have to adapt then and say you can't have any abortions after six weeks. I don't know. But it's very convenient for me though, right? Because 24 weeks just happens to be viability. So that's when most places, like the like most countries, like the UK, 24 weeks is our limit. Like then then after that, it can only be in cases of fetal anomaly or like threats and things like that. So I guess Mother Nature just did me a solid there. I wonder what the abstract of this says. because uh, I never I always forget about brain stuff. I remember some bits, amygdala, fucking whatever. The essence of the mind is consciousness. It emerged early during evolution and ontogeny? Oh, fuck. Appears to follow the same process as phylogeny. Fucking. Let's be uh, well behaved now, shall we? The branch of biology that deals with ontogenesis. Bro, I'm going to become a Matt Walsh fan. 
circular definite f you. The development of an individual organism or anatomical behavioral feature from the earliest stage to maturity. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, next one. The history of the evolution of a species or a group. Okay, cool. Consciousness comes from multiple sources, including visual, auditory, sense, sensory motor. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. And <laughs> proprioceptive senses. Proprioception is the body awareness sense. Ooh, what the fuck? It tells us where our body parts are without having to look for them. This helps to know where body parts are relative to each other, which strengthens our coordination skills. It also help, it tells us how much force to use when we are holding, pushing, pulling, or lifting objects. Okay. <laughs> is there a word for uh, applying this to other people's bodies? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Someone in society has tried to make a proprioception joke to call someone a bad shag. I'm just saying. Sorry. All right. It's gradually combined during development to build a unified consciousness due to the constant interactions between the brain, body, and environment. Sorry, that was really rude of me. Hang on. <sighs> Propria. Proprioceptive. Proprioceptive. That's dumb. I don't like it. Okay. Where am I? These gradually combine during development to build a unified consciousness due to the constant interaction between the brain, body, and environment. In the human, the emergence of consciousness depends on the activation of the cortex by thalamocortical connections around 24 weeks after conception. Radiations are the nerve fibers between the thalamus and the cerebral cortex. Sensory motor information from the thalamus to distinct areas. Oh, okay. Then the human fetus can be potentially conscious as it is aware of its body and reacts to touch, smell, and sound and shows social expressions in response to external stimuli. However, it is mainly asleep and probably not aware of itself and its environment. In contrast, the, new inf the newborn infant is awake after its first breaths of air and can be aware on its own self of its own self and others express emotions, and share feelings. The development of consciousness is a progressive, stepwise, structural, and functional evolution of multiple intricate components. The infant fulfills some of its more of the more basic criteria for consciousness. However, there are some important missing pieces at this stage, as it cannot remember the past and anticipate the future. So they're basically, they're still kind of fucking morons though, aren't they? Like, maybe we should just kill them. Maybe they deserve to die. I don't know. Probably not. I feel like that's a good clean line. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, what's the conclusion? Uh, Alabama cringe. Okay, hang on.